Hey everybody, David Barnes here with another episode of ET Info, where I bring you information on new and emerging technologies from IBM. In one of my previous videos, I showed a demonstration of our project Bluemix. Bluemix is a place for developers to go to quickly create applications in the cloud. Not just create, but execute the applications as well. Well, since one of our big target audiences for Bluemix is the millennial developer, and I will tell you I don't necessarily like the term millennial developer because it makes me feel old, but since they're a big target audience for us, we decided to get Bluemix out in front of a group of students to find out what they had to say about it. So we hooked up with some great folks from North Carolina State University, and we held a hackathon. The students broke up into teams, they had a very short period of time, and they created applications, and then we judged them based on who created the coolest apps. Well, they were all winners, but the team that came out ahead that were declared the winners, I decided to hook up with remotely, interview them, and find out what they had to say about Bluemix. Thanks guys for joining me, and congratulations on being the big winners of the hackathon, super geeks, right? Oh yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, and, and so how about if we start out with uh, each of you introducing yourself and then we'll go on a little bit about what you did. Sure, I'm Aaron Pope. I'm a senior in the computer science department and I'm also a co-president of the ACM AITP club. Shout out to ACM. Yeah, um, well, my name is Shishank. I'm a computer science graduate student. Um, I'll be graduating in, uh, in the next couple of months and I'll I'm trying to start full time uh, starting me. Terrific. So. Congratulations on that. And and Charles, I'm going to pretend like I don't know you. Introduce yourself. My name is Charles Hensley. I'm a senior in computer science, currently working for a cloud computing firm called Code Site with Aaron. Big plug. And so I, I do want to tell the audience we got three really heavy duty computer scientists here that want a hackathon. Guys, you want to share how long it took to get this Skype session going? <laughs> it's Windows 8, so... <laughs> we can't knock, oh, 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 we can't knock <laughs> an operating system on the air. I'm not going to say anything. So, hey, um, on the hackathon, I know that what you did, you took some, some cloud-based services, put them together, and built an application to solve a problem. And it was a real problem, and that's what's really cool about it. So what was the problem you started out to solve? Well, our problem was using Twitter efficiently and being able to get notifications when we needed to. In my case, it was for screenings. I wasn't getting them quick enough. And so I was able to use the SMS and this cloud platform to create a service to text these tweets to me directly. So, so these are movie screenings, right? And they get tweeted out there and there's like this notification. And if you aren't watching it every second of every day, it flies by and you don't get to go to a free screening. Is that about right? Exactly. Typically around 30 minutes after that tweet happens, that public event is gone. <laughs> Seriously. Okay. So this is like a boom notification, right? So, so what did you do? How did you fix this thing? Aaron, what was the, what was the geek part of this to bring it all together? Well, the, um, what we ended up doing was actually collecting a uh, stream from Twitter, and then we filtered that stream based on the um, user that we want to see, and then filtered it on also on keywords on top of that. And then once we got the tweet that we were looking for, we sent it through Bluemix to the SMS service, and then we sent a text to ourselves notifying that whenever it was going on. And the benefit of this was also that you know even if your phone was offline, you would still get um, a text message even if you had a signal. So you know what I love about computer science people? They go from all different levels of explanation, right? You work on all of the different levels, but it's like, at what level does this guy explain it? Versus, Shaw, tell me in your geek speak, what did you guys actually build? What'd you do? Um, so what we did was we accessed the uh, public tweets that are posted by, uh, um, posted by all the users in Twitter. So once we do that, we can get access to uh, all the public tweets, like um, like what Charles mentioned, like uh, like movie screening ones. So uh, since we get a lot of these uh, uh, tweets, we cannot monitor each and every one. So uh, what our application does uh, does is help you filter out these public tweets based on the preferences that you would give as users or uh, uh, what you specify as keywords for your tweets. So we use the uh, Twitter APIs uh, to access these public streams and then uh, filter out these messages 
So, so this is so from the Bluemix palette, right? You got this. You got the cloud service. You got the Bluemix. I'll call it a palette of services. So you picked an SMS service. You picked a Twitter service, and then you spent how many hours bringing this whole thing together? You pulled an all-nighter. So yes, um, we just uh, uh, we worked overnight. We had to finish the app in like under 24 hours, so we had to work overnight. Yeah, it was very close. We were trying to get the persistent screen, which is what I think we did above uh, the, the other teams. You know, uh, instead of being in Twitter just every five minutes of what tweets were coming out, we maintained a persistent connection with them. That did take a while to figure out. We were in the building until 3 a.m. <laughs> uh, yeah, but 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 from what I understand, that this hackathon was co-sponsored with ACM, right? That's right, actually. Yeah, um, you know, I helped uh, set some of the meetings up, you know, and then um, helped do some of the publicity around the campus, set our flowers and all that good stuff, and send out emails. And so you guys actually won money, right? Yes. We want Amazon gift cards. So. <laughs> it's that's money. So and Charles, you're complaining because you had to work till three in the morning, but you still won money. Okay. Am I getting that right? I'm not complaining. Okay, 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 okay. Did they feed? Did they feed you? Oh yes. Okay, that's all that matters. So tell me. All that matters. So tell me this whole approach, right? There's there's this Bluemix approach to you got a cloud platform. You guys didn't have to deal with the platform or underneath the platform, the infrastructure, right? So you got that, and then you got. The, by the way, the phone ringing got an Android phone there, or the the doorbell. It got a new Android phone tonight, so I'm going to run quickly. Um, so you got this infrastructure, and then you got this platform that's sitting on it, and you all just picked the different services you wanted, and then built the application. About right. Yes, right. Yeah, it, was, it was a very efficient process, actually. Um, you know, once you had your web server um, built up, you could just load it up into the um, the cloud, and it, it ran just as you would expect it to. And no setting up virtual machines, configuring virtual machines, installing operating systems, skip all that, just get down to coding. Yeah, this is like platform as a service. It's not infrastructure as a service. So all you need, all you need to do is click next and finish to set up all your services, and you're done. So we barely wasted any time on setting up any of the services. That's very cool. So, so do you uh, you expect this kind of an environment when you get out in the workforce? I know you're already working, Charles. You already plugged the company, right? And Aaron, I think you do some <laughs> stuff with him there too. If you want to plug him again, but is this the way you expect to work when you when you get out there, right? Is that the way? Well, when I get out there, I'm not sure if we'll be there immediately, but realistically, this is going to be the future. So, I do expect to use this in some way, somehow, especially professionally. Currently in our job right now, we work with um, building web applications for Microsoft SharePoint and whatnot like that, and you know, trying to um, you know do workflows and all that really great stuff. And so you want to work in this environment, like a Bluemix environment, to build out that stuff, right? It, it, yeah, it does, yeah. especially um, you know, because with that stuff, that's software as a service, so you don't get to choose what you really want. You only get to choose that enhance that software. In our okay. case, I'm oh, sorry. Okay, Charles. No, 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 this is cool. This is important. Go ahead, Charles. Oh, and in our case, we get to be programmers, which means we don't have to be system administrators, which is what this platform does for us. It takes out that jobs and gets us their programming immediately. Which was the point of the hackathon? Yeah. So, so I like. I actually heard somebody say, "Wow, let's uh, get by all the infrastructure stuff and get down to the art of programming." So, did you guys know you're artists? In a way, in a way, you can code some really logically creative. Yes. Oh, <laughs> logically creative. That's a new one. I'm going to write that one down. So, Aaron, hey, I pulled you away from one point when Charles so rudely interrupted. Um, you were. And I'm just kidding. So, you were talking about you now. You just have the services, but you want to be able to build more than just the services. The exactly. software is a service. Yeah, uh, you know, I really enjoyed the fact that we could build our own web application. You know, we weren't limited to using just, say, one software, you know, enhancing uh, oh Skype or something like that. You know, we could actually choose to build our application from the ground up of how we want it to look, you know, where we're sending our service to, what we're doing with our data. We have full control of all of that. And that's what's so great about Platform as a Service of the Bluemix Cloud. Wow, you know, I'm going to send you an Amazon gift card for that whole plug there, right? <laughs> I don't have to. So, so, so going forward, it sounds like this is going to be a way for you to all develop code. And I know you're all going to be very successful, and hopefully, 
I don't know, maybe you come and work for us, right? We got a place for you. You already know how to use it. So, so I'm going to bring this to a close because I know we could keep going on forever. But again, congratulations on what you did. I hope that our paths cross again because I know in the IT world that's very, very likely. And good luck with what your future jobs are. Cool? Thank you, David. Okay, signing off. And by the way, if Skype gives you any more problems, you give me a call, okay? <laughs> You'll be our first contact. Power user. Okay, later, guys. Bye. All I can say is, wow, every time I talk to a group of students like that, I learn something new. What I learned this time is they're smarter than me. Hey, there's a lot more to Bluemix than we talked about here in the video. If you want to learn more about it, if you want to learn more about our next generation cloud platform, you can visit our JSTART website and that's at ibm.com jstart.